Uh, my name is uh, Mark Wendelaan. I'm a uh, professor in biostatistics. So I will talk uh, about data-driven decision-making in health and why we need a statistical revolution. So to demonstrate why we can do so much better than current practice regarding statistical analysis, I'm going to use an example. And this is an example about a question in medical research was for people with uh, septic shock which are already getting antibiotics, should they also get steroids? And that was a question where the medical doctors in their minds thought it should help. And so they ran a lot of randomized trials. In fact, 31 were aiming to answer this question. They also did an analysis of all 31 randomized trials combined, and they couldn't find a significant benefit till their frustration. They also actually looked at three particular major randomized trials. Again, no benefit. So what's the, the type of approach uh, which is used in these standard analysis of uh, randomized trials is, is not really looking at the individual information of a patient. It just compares two groups and just essentially looks at the proportion of deaths in the treatment group and the control group. So this was that, right? Uh, no significant benefit. It's just a relative risk uh, for mortality. It's plotted with a confidence interval, right? So if the confidence interval goes beyond one, that means you don't know anything. You cannot conclude anything. So to actually estimate uh, the effect of the treatment, uh, what you want to do, you want to learn the effect for every individual in your study. And every individual is characterized by a certain history. So you really like to understand for every individual, if I would you give you the treatment, what would be your probability of death? If I give you the control, what would be your probability of death? And what's the difference? And then we can take the average, and, and, and that gives us then the average uh, treatment effect, which is used to evaluate the overall performance. To do that, we actually, uh, there are all kinds of algorithms we could use. They are called prediction algorithms, machine learning algorithms, uh, which are aiming to do these type of predictions. Uh, they can in include very simple algorithms, but also uh, very advanced, highly adaptive machine learning algorithms. Deep learning is a, is a hot uh, term these days. So what we do is what we call super learning, which really let the data speak of what algorithm or in fact what combination of the algorithm has the best performance. So it doesn't, it sets up a competition uh, where you use internal uh, data splitting, you split the data let's say 9 tenths and 1 tenth, you train all the algorithms on the 9 tenth of the data and you see who is actually doing the best on the patients we left out in actually predicting their outcome. And based on that we then can choose the winner and in fact we can also even find the best weighted combination of algorithms and that is then the actual algorithm we will use. Now this does significantly better than betting on one particular algorithm. And, and you can, uh, this is one, this is a complicated picture for the type of talk of this, but uh, let me just do it quickly. What you see here are all these algorithms which uh, are in the library of the super learner and, and then the super learner is at the top. And what you have is 15 dots. They represent 15 publicly available data sets. The red one is the average performance, more to the left is the better. And so you see that the super learner wins, now fine. But what I want to point out is, like one of the algorithms is very good, it's the Bayesian regression trees, number three. And why is it number three? Because in one particular data set, it actually does very poorly. And that's of course exactly the type of data set where then the super learner will recognize them. You're not doing well, I'm not going to use you. And that's uh, where you get the big gains, by have that type of adaptivity. Now, we also use uh, super learner right, in all kinds of applications. This is an, uh, to get better predictions of mortality in the intensive care unit. Uh, so this was an, uh, an article in Lancet where dramatic gains are achieved relative to the kind of predictions people use these days. Okay, so then you might say, okay, that's it. Right? Now we can use this fancy uh, prediction algorithm, super learner, to get the predict, uh, prediction of death for every patient under treatment and control, take the difference. The problem is that is not enough. And this is one of the, was one of the big challenges in machine learning that people in machine learning didn't know how to get formal inference, uh, which in, like having confidence intervals. So what you have to do is actually something extra. And that we call that targeted learning. Uh, and that is uh, in particular called targeted maximum likelihood. But what it does, it takes the super learner prediction function, but it actually is going to have another look at, the, use the data for a next round and updates this super learning fit for the sake of doing a better job on the particular causal query you have, which is in this case the average treatment effect. And because of this step, suddenly the estimates get very precise for your precise question, which was not knowing the whole prediction function, it was just getting that average uh, treatment effect. 
And this, is, uh, this step is, is, optimi is optimal by theory, and it, and it suddenly allows us to actually get inference and confidence intervals and all that. So that uh, targeted maximum likelihood combined with the super learner is then what we can use to reanalyze these data sets. And now you see suddenly that the pool team Lee on the bottom, you see a relative mortality of uh, s significant. And so there seems to be, a, there, so that proves there is actually a real benefit in spite of the 31 randomized trials. Uh, not showing it initially, but you have to use the right methodology. However, there's something interesting going on because if you actually analyze the data, what you see is there is this kind of baseline uh, medical test. It's ACTH stimulation every patient gets. And what you see is that when they respond to the stress test, they are actually, uh, it's really helping to take the treatment, the steroids, but if they don't respond to the stress test is actually harmful. So there's a group of people where it's harmful and a group of people where it's actually beneficial. And so really, uh, that's the real thing we should have learned from this data set. And uh, so then you can, of course, then actually conclude from that uh, who should be treated, who shouldn't. Okay, but what's the bigger story here is instead of analyzing 31 randomized trials, which hardly talk to each other, right? Or, and and, and what we should be doing is run these sequentially, right? And that's called an adaptive design, where you sequentially, you start with a randomized trial, you look at the data, you learn from it, you say, hey, who is, uh, who is benefiting from this treatment? And if you have real evidence, you start assigning the treatment in the next group more according to what you have learned, but still randomization, and you keep going along in this way. And what you're doing sequentially, you're actually going to learn the optimal rule for treating, not just what's on average best, who should be treated with the treatment and who shouldn't. And so that's uh, also work we have done using sequentially randomized uh, trials, uh, using this, uh, this targeted learning approach. And I think this is really the future uh, of how we should be doing studies. Uh, for people interested, this is a uh, recent book came out, Targeted Learning and Data Science, came out a few weeks ago. And, and so there are two books on this topic for the interest person. Thank you very much.